Fully released on July 14, 2022, Power Wash Simulator is a simulation game where players, well, power wash various locations and objects. It's one of those simulation games that's mostly silly, but is actually a lot of fun and oddly, very relaxing. It's a fun game to just boot up and indulge in while turning off the brain for a while. Even though Power Wash Simulator is a simple game, it does have some complexity and even a developed story. So without further ado, let's gear up and give Power Wash Simulator an in-depth review. The gameplay sees players power washing all types of gunk, grime, and dirt off of people's properties. Simply hold down the fire button and move the nozzle wherever there's nasty stuff to be cleaned. Let's talk about the aspects that make up power washing. First, the washer itself. Players are given four different nozzles from the start, and they will need to use certain ones in order to clean certain types of grime. The differences between the nozzles is the spread and power of the water that comes out. The red nozzle is a straight line that has no spread at all, but does prove to be the most useful when having to remove the dirtiest of stains. The white nozzle has the biggest spread, but only proves to be useful against the dirt that isn't so ingrained in whatever it is the player is washing. The yellow nozzle has a bigger spread than the red nozzle, but not as much power. The orange nozzle spread isn't as large as the white nozzles, but it does pack more of a punch. A nozzle spread also correlates with its range, so the wider the spread, the smaller the range. There are three special nozzles. The first is the rotating one that moves around while cleaning and is slightly better than the red nozzle. The second one is a special container that spews liquids that are specialized in cleaning certain materials. The third one shoots three red nozzles at once, known as the trident, unlocked after completing the clean the ancient statue job. All three of these can be bought in the store, along with the special cleaners, but we'll get into that later. Apart from that, players can also have their nozzle horizontal or vertical. They can also turn on free mode, which allows for the power washer to go in any direction the player wants it to, along with being able to toggle the washer, so it'll shoot out water without the player needing to hold down a button or key. The properties that must be cleaned are separated into parts. Players must completely clean every single part in order for the property to be considered 100% done. Each part that's completely clean gives the player money. The bigger the piece, the higher the cash reward. Money can be used in the shop where players can buy new power washers, skins for their washers, player outfits, gloves, extenders, and the aforementioned mission liquid cleaners. The power washers in the store vary on their stats. The more money they're worth, the more powerful they are. Anyways, going back to the power washing, players are going to have to do more than switch nozzles in order to completely clean a property. Some properties supply players with a ladder, or multiple ladders to reach higher places, and stools to clean things that just require players to have a bit of extra height. Really tall jobs come with scaffolds, and the players can use its multiple levels to clean every inch of grime on a big building. If players need to clean something that's out of reach, but don't want to use the ladders, or don't even have ladders, they can use extenders. Extenders increase the range of the power washer and are handy for spots that are high up or far away, but a ladder just isn't the best tool to clean them. There's three different extenders to help players clean off gunk that vary in the distance to the power washer. One of the most useful features of this game, if not the most useful, is the ability to highlight dirt. By hitting the show dirt button, the remaining gunk will flash in yellow to show the player how much more needs to be clean and any pieces of dirt that are hard to spot. Players get new jobs by getting stars throughout the career mode, and more stars also grant players the ability to buy certain things in the store. The players notify whenever they unlock a new job by a small piece of text that appears at the top of the screen, and players don't even have to finish their current job to hop between levels. Of course, sooner or later, players are going to have to go back and complete certain jobs before they can continue progressing through the career mode. But it's nice to have the ability to switch jobs, as players may feel their current job is too tedious and just need a break so a change of visuals can rejuvenate players into power washing their troubles away. Speaking about power washing and relaxing, 
players can go back and take on any job they previously tackled, and they can use any equipment they've unlocked. Also, there's a challenge mode that ups the ante on certain jobs by forcing players to complete a level in under a certain amount of time, or by only using a certain amount of water. Of course, to make it fair, the game has pre-selected loadouts for the challenges, that way players can't cheat the time-limited jobs by using the best equipment. They're really just a fun way to test the player's power washing skills, as they don't give much besides a gold, silver, or bronze medal, depending on how good of a job they did. Power Wash Simulator isn't really known for its graphics. It was made by an indie team, so they didn't have much money for impressive visuals. Regardless, the game is far from an eyesore. It's clear what each object is supposed to be, the UI is very helpful and well put together, and the game is fairly lightweight, so players don't have to have the best PC to push max settings. Anyways, let's get into each of these things I mentioned about the visuals. It's a pretty standard looking game. It doesn't really have any unique art style, but honestly, it works that way. The game wants to be relaxing, it wants to make sure the player can see where there's dirt, so by keeping it simple, players can just sit back, enjoy the fun of power washing, but complete the job and not get confused on what needs to be cleaned next. Of course, there's nothing wrong with stunning graphics, The Power Wash Simulator doesn't want to mesmerize players. Just power wash and enjoy the progression of the property becoming cleaner and cleaner. Anyways, the UI of this game is great. In the top left, Players are shown the amount of grind that's left on whatever piece they're aiming at, the name of the part they're naming at, the material of which the part is made out of, and their percentage of how much has already been cleaned. The top right shows how much cash the player has, along with the amount of stars they have gained so far from the current job they're working on. The bottom left displays which power washer is being used, which nozzle is on, and, if present, which liquid cleaner is being used. Players can expand this menu and manually switch between the many parts of the power washer. A similar menu known as the tablet can be brought up, which will display every single part that needs to be cleaned, how many of one part exists, and the total amount of dirt that has been cleaned off a part. The player will also get text messages from clients, and they're either complete nonsense, or actually related to the job the player has to do. Or maybe they aren't complete nonsense, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Next, the menus are very simple, and they work well that way. They clearly display what they contain, and even have an image to accompany them. Not to mention, the menus look like blueprints to further the idea the player is a power washer. Anyways, the story mode menus display the name of the job, how much the payout is, and how much gunk has currently been cleaned. By clicking on the job, a description about what it's all about pops up, and players can also see the text messages that appear during the job. Speaking of those text messages and job descriptions, it turns out both of these things actually tell a story. A story that's actually complex. I'm not joking. Strap in because this is going to get a bit deep. The main character and their friend, Harper Shaw, decided to start up a power washing business as a career. It starts out simple. People need things cleaned, they call it the player's company. Things start to get a bit strange whenever the mayor, Jeff Jefferson the 13th, is introduced. He's passively mentioned when the owner of the playground brings out the politician's cat, Ulysses, is missing. During the fire truck job, the fire chief mentions that the cat may not actually be missing and that the mayor is causing this fuss to distract people from a scandal he has with the pipeline, diverting a river's water to an illegal mining operation. Well, later during that mission, Calvin Miller, a client the main character worked with before, sees the mayor's cat and supposedly rescues him, but it's not explicitly mentioned what happens next. Jefferson personally contacts the main character, who he calls Dirtfinder, and this is what I'll be referring to the main character as from now on, and asks him to clean his house after it was egged. It tended out that the mayor's house was egged by the monks from the Clean the Temple mission because of what happened with the water pipeline, which was something the monks heavily relied on. Anyways, Jefferson mentions that his cat is still missing, even though Miller supposedly saved him, and that other cats have gone missing too. This is further corroborated when Harper states he read an article about how Muckingham, the fictional town of the game, has been named a town without any cats. Jefferson leaves Muckingham shortly after, and doesn't intend on returning. 
Oddly enough, cat paw prints can be found in multiple levels too, even after the cats have supposedly left. While that's happening, a nearby volcano known as Mount Rushless starts smoking, and the citizens fear that it will erupt. A person named Wilberforce Thrust is mentioned in the subway job, as the property owner mentions some history about the place, which includes the mayor before Jefferson and Wilberforce Thrust working together. This will be important later on, as another character named Blake Thrust, who is connected to Wilberforce, is mentioned, and Dirt Fighter even cleans his drill, suggesting he may have something to do with the aforementioned pipeline scandal. Anyways, a couple of jobs later, Dirt Finder cleans an ancient statue, and once it's fully clean, it shoots a beam at Mount Rushless. Is that not crazy enough? Well, Harper asked Dirt Finder to clean his RV again, but turns out, the RV is actually an alien spacecraft in disguise. Yeah, Harper is actually a time traveler, and decided to go back in time to figure out why Mount Rushless erupted, and why it triggered an apocalypse on Earth. Finally, on the final mission, Dirt Finder goes to a huge palace created by a group known as the Pacifist of the Lost City that shoots out a huge beam towards the monstrous volcano after it's cleaned. Okay, so let me condense the story, or at least what I think it is, so it's easier to understand. Blake Thrust, a millionaire that worked for Jefferson, along with previous mayors, became fixated on the Lost City of the Pacifist because he discovered that they had a rare ore powering their tech that he wanted, so he set up illegal mines, with the help of the mayor, all over the place. Thrust used a stream inside of Mount Rushless to bring up the lost city above water, and to also make his own type of tech. However, this put the world in jeopardy, because Mount Rushless is the powerhouse of all volcanoes, so if it blows, so do all the other volcanoes in the world. Harper goes back in time to tell the pacifist about the present, and they decide to take the palace and put it on an island near Mount Rushless. Once the palace was completely cleaned, it would activate a neutralizing beam to calm Mount Rushless and stop the eruptions. Oh boy, that was something else. I totally did not expect something like that to come out of a game like this. For what it's worth, it's a neat story. It doesn't outright tell the player what exactly is going on until the ending. They have to pick up on the subtle clues sprinkled throughout the text messages. Also, apologies if I didn't do the best explaining the story. It's kind of confusing and there's not a complex timeline of the story from what I know. So if anybody watching this wants to add more to the story, leave a comment down below because I'm pretty sure I missed something. Like what the significance of the cats mean. Now, Power Wash Simulator doesn't really have a lot in terms of the sound department. The players will hear rushing water whenever they use their power washer, a ding will be heard as soon as a piece of the job is completely cleaned, and the nozzle will make a slight creaking noise whenever the player rotates it. But other than that, the game is rather quiet. I believe the lack of noise is supposed to relax the player. After all, it's very satisfying seeing gunk removed whenever the water hits it and the ding noise that plays after completing a piece adds a bit of instant gratification that makes the player want to keep cleaning. Power Wash Simulator does technically have music. The merry-go-round will play a jolly tune whenever it's turned on, and a song called Make It All Shine plays after completing the last level. All I can really say is that they fit in well with the game, and are fine enough tracks, but not much else. The game has a few extra jobs that could be done by choosing the bottom right option in the main menu. Players are given a pre-chosen loadout, so they can't use whatever power washer they want or have an unlimited amount of special cleaners. Regardless, I think it works better that way. Some of these maps would be too easy and could be completed within mere minutes with the later power washers. So by limiting the player's options, it makes sure the players get the most out of what the job has to offer. Speaking of these special jobs, Future Lab is still making them to this day. What they do is they set up a section in their Discord server where fans can create threads on which kind of jobs they'd like to see in the game, and interact with pre-existing threads that also have jobs they want in the game. Future Lab chooses the most popular ideas, and players vote on which jobs seem the most appealing. As of this video, they're only on their second community map vote, but remember, this game just released a few months ago, and Future Lab is probably already busy with other projects. Not to mention, they're all supporting Power Wash Simulator to the Switch and PlayStation consoles along with making updates for the game too. Either way, these community map votes are really cool, as not only do fans get to see what could potentially be in the game, they also have a say in which jobs make it in, so it's a really nice way to engage fans. 
Future Lab is also making constant developer updates on their Steam page too, so it's nice to see where exactly they are with the current thing they're working on. Another extra I can think of is just about every level has a gnome hidden somewhere in it. Some are more hidden than others, but they're always there regardless. And last but not least, the player will unlock a special skin for the Prime Vista Pro after completing the last job. It's reminiscent of the R on the walls of the temple. Alright, now, onto the issues. The first and main issue I have is it would be nice for the game to direct players to whatever pieces need to be cleaned next if they ask. For the larger jobs, it's difficult to clean everything in one swoop. The player is most likely going to complete most of the pieces and then have to go back to finish whatever they missed. Then they're going to have to find whatever piece they missed, and sometimes it's hard to spot. It's especially frustrating when there are multiple pieces to one part, meaning the player has to find which single specific part among many isn't clean. Having to go round and round without finding the final piece or pieces that need to be cleaned is frustrating, so a compass or an arrow that points to the dirty piece would be helpful. The next issue is kinda minor, but sometimes the show dirt button doesn't work right away. For whatever reason, the game will sometimes not show the player the remaining dirt whenever they hit the show dirt button within the first minute of the game. It's not that frustrating, but it would be nice if it was fixed. Now this next one isn't really an issue, but it's definitely something the developers should consider, and that is user created maps. This game already has a decent amount of replayability, but if players could create their own jobs and share them, this game's replayability would skyrocket and add so much more to its already existing value. Now I don't know too much about optimizing mods for video games, and Future Lab is a small indie team, so I imagine it would take a lot of time and effort to make such a thing, but this addition would make a huge impact on the game. I'm sure it's something they've already considered, and maybe they're already working on it, but again, this isn't an issue of the game, but the developers should really consider it if they haven't already. Other than that, I don't have any further complaints. Power Watch Simulator is such a simple, but really fun and enjoyable game due to its relaxing nature and the build up to completing a job hypes up players. It's a game for pretty much everybody, it's a universally enjoyed experience, but it's kind of everything Power Watch Simulator has to offer. 38 different jobs, all with varying objects and difficulties, plenty of things to buy in the store so players can get the job done faster, extra jobs that are unique and unlike anything in the story mode, Co-op modes, so players can clean with their friends. Simple visuals to relax players and make finding gunk easy. And a challenge mode to test one's skills and for a bit of extra fun. What else can be said about this game? It really speaks for itself. It's full of content, players can play with their friends, not difficult, and it's still being updated to this day. Issues really don't get in the way of having fun. And if custom jobs are ever added, it would be legendary. And until next time, Let's get our suits back on and finish up this job.